the area on in our post we looked at uh, production from here. So what are the possibilities? 
So you 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 can you can have something like that. Then that's what we said. You are supposed to add the factors of production. Okay? Factors of production. So have that one in mind, because it's one of the things that when we are doing How does this relate to this? 
by the war with Hamas. This being converted into this is the production process, right? And I call this under a process to, in order to produce this, right? Mm -hmm. What process? What process goes on here? What about my dad's team? What, what process does it go through? Mm -hmm. So, if we want to use the mandat thing, that should always have been mentioned and make fun of it. Huh? So, we have flour. What else do we have? Sugar. Sugar. Baby. Come on, it's only the boy who is mentioning things. What about the girl? The one who is <laughs> Baking whatever, uh, oil, and so on and so on. Okay? So, this is the process, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have mandat. Somebody corrected me when we left this room. They said, you know why we have? You see mandat? We don't see mandat. We see my dad. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, I see. Now I'll do it for it. My dad. Not my dad. My dad. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, this thing, these are the input. Right? These are the output. So, the input goes to a process to become so that's the production cost. But what is the relationship between this and this is what is the production cost. So if you have one of these, just put this as like an input. So let's say this is an input and this is an output. One input that this yields one output, two inputs that this yields two outputs, four inputs that this yields four outputs. Is this one input yielding 0 0.5 output? how the input relates, how are they related to the output? What kind of relations there is? If you have one kg of flour that is produced one kg of matter, What is the issue? That is a production function. Where so production, if you wanted to define what is production, production is a process of transforming input into output. Right? The word, the way production. If you are to define what does the way production mean, production means transformation, the process of transforming input into output. That's what production is. That's the definition of production. Now, the relationship. The physical relations between input and output is production function. Anybody is very confused? Are you good to go? Any, any question? Okay.
enter a relationship between input and output. Okay? So, what is the output? Output, maybe we can put it as uh, maybe Y or Q. Okay? Q, the output. Okay? How will this be related to the input? We are saying production function. What is it? How do we write the function? Okay. You can actually 
there have been a lot of explanations about it. But you can simplify that into, for example, labor, capital, and so on and so on, right? That would be you can simplify that with symbols, right? You can put symbols. This one is labor and capital. Somebody is disputing that I'm not putting a case in this chapter. Why are we putting a case? Not how. How does the labor sound? You, you know how, how we in Malawi and how we produce the air and the power. Okay? We could as well put there. You know, so it doesn't matter. Okay? Provided we know that we are saying this is the air. Again, in the future. 
So that's the definition of what, what do we mean by an economic model. A model explains what has happened and how it will happen again in the future. Meaning, the model tries to tell you, to explain why something is happening. Okay? And that explanation can actually, you can use it if you believe it, you will see that things will happen in the same way again. For you to prove that something is true, that the model is something that is accepted, that is a good explanation of how something is happening. For example, I don't know whether you have, have you defined what a theory is? A theory Very similar to what, how you understand what a theory is. Meaning, it's an explanation of something, the relationship between something and something, and that that relationship is always true to happen again and again if you try to do it. It will always happen in the same way, it will give you the same result. If you can prove that it will give you the same result now and now and now again and again and again, then you have proved that something is true. It becomes a theory. Everybody will agree with you. Okay? So a model is an explanation that that explanation of some of how something has happened and that it will happen again in the same way in the future. Okay? So in, the, in in economic models, we also try to prove that, we also try to show that this relationship will always be true. It is true now and it will happen again in the future, if you repeat it. Okay? So now, these models help economists predict. Because if it is true, explanation of how it has happened and that you can prove that it will happen again, therefore we can predict that if this is happening, it will happen again next year or the other year and blah blah blah. So those models are the ones which help us, for example, to plan the economy. How do you advise if you are an economic advisor? You look at this, the data, look at the relationship, and you can predict how it will happen again. So, strategies are different from models. Models just explain. Now, you can devise a strategy to make sure that something happens according to that model. So government will develop strategy because somebody has told them that if you do this, this is what will happen. Because models have proved it. Okay? So of that last equation, sorry, or model or function, the production function as depicted by this guy, this code and data. So it's just written called data production function. If you Google, you will see code uh, data. Just Google code dash data. It, it comes out as the model. Now, here is this is the cell, cell linear production function. It's not very complicated. So, for him, it's very linear.
no be able to kill you today. Doesn't matter whether I'm using K or C, but this is cattle. So you can express it in the way you like. You can put it like that if you want to, or you can expand it. You can put It was not just a theory that 
came came from nowhere. They studied empirical data, they studied data, and they were able to explain that data into a mathematical expression. So it, 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 it came out of um, an, an empirical. Empirical data means a real right data that actually happens when we say empirical. It's not like experiment. This is empirical means something that has actually happened. Data that you can actually get, not explain it. So, Paul H. Douglas, his full name, Paul H. Douglas, uh, and C.W. Cole. Uh, they did this in the manufacturing industry in the, in the U.S. So they were able to produce, uh, to come up with a production function and express it in, in that form. In that form. So they use only two factors of production. Labor and start. And you will see why they were criticized later by other uh, economists. Because their function only takes into account labor and start. Only labor and start. What other criticism would you, or what kind of criticism would you get if you are only really, uh, expressing a production function in terms of just two factors? Labor and capital. Maybe before we go to the criticism themselves, one particular thing that Cope and Dacca uh, did, which, has, which is problematic in this linear, linear expression, is that they, they looked at production as, as having a constant return, meaning that if so if you double, for example, if you have your inputs, your input, let's say, uh, 10, 10 inputs, and this gives you 40 outputs, they are these functions, these relationships that they developed, and because it's linear, they say they, it actually tells us that when you double this, let's say to 20 inputs, this will also mean that the output will be doubled. Okay? So if your input were 10 and you had 40, if you change your input to 20, you will have 80. That's the major flow. The flow is the drawback. The major drawback of uh, this thing. It's never like that in the right. Because this is showing also that you have constant technology, constant information, and constant technology. Technology here is not changing. So if 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 you have two units, two inputs giving you four, when you have four, you will get eight. That's another uh, big problem.
So, we can have a uh, <coughs> we can look at some of the criticisms. I'm not, I'm not gonna bother writing uh, doing the mathematical thing. Eh? What what is important for you is to know that for Douglas they try to express that process I described. That process of transforming inputs into outputs, the production, and the production function being a relationship. So they try to show the relationship in a mathematical form. Okay? And that mathematical form is what I am trying to give you. I'll try to give you here. That it is very simple. It is just Q is equal to A and A. Whether you have a uh, coefficient here, and you can, you can put like that, it doesn't matter whether you can, this coefficient, you want to, to put them on top, it doesn't matter. Whether you want to put them like that or see there, it doesn't matter. Okay? What, is, what matters is that if they are expressing a true input kind of function, very basic, labor and capital, that's all. And it is linear. Okay? That's what this guy did. Long time ago. Now, what are the criticisms? One criticism of this model is that it's only using uh, two inputs, labor and capital. So it is neglecting some important inputs. So in there, it doesn't, that, 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 that model doesn't even tell us about other raw materials. It doesn't show raw materials used in production. You remember when we had Mandalski, we had raw materials, right? We had raw materials, labor, capital, and, and, and so on and on. The one we the one we derived here in class, we said Mandalski has raw materials, labor, and, and blah blah. <coughs> that was our production function for Mandalski, but. The, the cop diagram guy, they only constructed one like that only for labor and capital. They ignored raw materials, which are very important in production. So that's one thesis of cop diagram. So it is not very possible to generalize this. This can never become a theorem, so to speak. You cannot generalize. You cannot generalize for all production situations. It cannot hold for all production situations. It cannot explain all production situations. It would be difficult if you use this as if you develop a strategy out of Obdagras production function. The second criticism raised is uh, the problem of measurement. Because it only takes a uh, quantity of capital available for production. 
quantity of capital that they have for production. Now, full use of capital is only possible if, if you have uh, full employment. You know, sometimes what we mean by full employment is that when you, you, when you are producing at you the outmost capacity, so you have used all your capital, all your labor. And when you are not in the, in the full capacity, it's not possible to use uh, to use all your capital. If you are not operating on your capacity, it means you have something underemployed or unemployed. So even capital can only be fully used when you are in full employment. So it is a problem, for example, to explain the function, to explain the relationship between inputs and, and outputs because no economy is, you, uh, is found in a situation where it is in full employment. There is always a situation where you don't get into full employment. You employ all your labor, all your capital. You always find some unemployment. And because it is linear, for example, you remember the production function, the production frontier, and um, the production possibility curve that we had, that one we had like that. Um, when you are, we want to represent this as linear, so we will have something like this. Because we are having capital and labor. And it's linear. So this just tells us that if you combine this and this, this is where you will be producing. Like that. <coughs> Remember when I said that if you have two inputs, ten outputs, when you when you double this side, you also double the other side. Right? That's what I said. So if that is what the, the function is talking about, then you are likely to find your situation uh, to be like this. Your straight line will be like this. So you are using only two factors, and these are the outputs you will get as you are adding labor and capital, labor and capital, labor and capital. And so you, you will actually find yourself in a and because this is that frontier, those frontiers uh, will be found in this.
I hope it will also become clear once we start combining this with post. But this is just a production function. Now when we include this the cost function, you will see this relationship between this production possibility case and how they relate to cost of production. Remember, here we are not even we are not talking about how much labor is costing, how much capital is costing. We are just uh, doing a technical relationship how inputs are related to output. That's what we discussed in production factors. That's all. Don't think beyond any of that. Otherwise, you'll be confused. Just look at how these people are expecting production function. That's all. Okay? So let's go back. What other criticism can we raise? 